Um, Coon Cassius, IFL TV, MTK Global. We're at the press conference here in Newcastle to announce the October 13th show where Lewis Ritson will challenge for the European title against Francesco Patera. I'm joined by Lewis Ritson. Guggen, all right. How are you, mate? Oh, I've just said before, you're looking good. Coming off, you're yeah, looking no, slim. You're trying you're to make cruise away. <laughs> I don't know what for, but just <laughs> trying to make it anyway. Um, yeah. First of all, I'm going to ask you about this Sandman thing. What? Because I asked Eddie, we asked like Joshua Boatsy, obviously wanted to know. No one really knew why no. you're called the Sandman specifically. Is it, some, is it a secret? No, it's not a secret. It's not all a right. secret. Usually when, I get, you went I, I get used... when you went to Boatsy, when you went to because oh, I usually get because of the back the back stories I usually get wrong. I was doing a couple of interviews and I, oh you can't see that because uh, what happens um, a man used to come to the gym who was a notorious uh, fighter bare knuckle fighter. Right. He had that he had that nickname in jail and okay. he come to the gym and he used to bring his son and he come with a custom made pair of shorts and give us them and yeah. says oh that was my nickname and you remind me of when I was little. Okay. And you give us them and it had the Sandman on and it just stuck, it stuck ever since then. So All it? right, okay. But usually when I tell that, and the, I mention the jail pot, I can't, oh, I never mention the jail pot. <laughs> IFL, you can see. IFL, I can see what I call it. Yeah. yeah, I can kind of maybe see why you didn't want to announce it's, it to it's, a room packed full of people there too. Yeah, sure. yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, great opportunity for you to become European champion uh, on October 13th, Francesco Patera, yeah. who hasn't been down in his career, hasn't been stopped. What? We obviously know he... He lost the fight with Sean Dodd a couple of years ago, but he's been in with the likes of Mendy and uh, uh, Edith Tatley yeah. twice. So, yeah, this is going to be a task for you. No, it is. It's, 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 uh, it's, it's a major step up, it is. Um, you beat Tatley for the European title, got beaten in the rematch. Mendy took on 12 rounds. And, you know, he pushed Dodd quite close, you know, and quite a few people have got 50-50 opinions on the result. And uh, you've seen in the days a cool character, and I think he's going to come to try and spoil the apple card. Mm, absolutely. Um, Newcastle obviously last time out which I was to say obviously I wasn't there but I know the atmosphere <laughs> in Newcastle but you know when Lewis Ritson is kind of you know co-headlining I know he was with Josh Kelly but the atmosphere looked absolutely mental which we kind of expect here in Newcastle anyway when the, yeah. when the fans get behind the fire like they are with you yeah. and by the looks of it Joseph Laws as well yeah. I've never seen that at a press conference no, no, before the, the, the Benwell lot the West Enders they're, they're the, that's the rough part where just, where the, I'm the sensible part that's a rough part but no Joe's a good lad he's got a, uh, got a good following and that's what, that's what you know boxing needs in Sky and Matchroom that's what they're coming up for because of, of the atmosphere and you know we've got, we've got the fighters now in the North East to have the big shows up here and it's good mm, definitely um, your promoters there ready I wanted to grab him up here I don't know if he's Edward? Edward? Happy. Have you got one minute? Sorry, I know I'm, I'm using you. Like, I'm using you today. <laughs> he told us the Sandman story. Obviously, you know the Sandman story. I don't story. know it. I didn't see it again now. <laughs> Do you want to just quickly explain to him in 30 seconds what it is? Quite interesting, Go actually. Because it, it was a, a bloke that used to come to the gym who was a notorious bare knuckle fighter. Right. And that was his nickname. The Sandman. The Sandman. Right, okay. And he obviously had done jail time for fighting and stuff. And he goes, come in one day with a custom made pair of shorts. He said, oh, you, you remind me of when I was little. There you go. So and had, and had the Sandman. But do you think we should come sense. out to Metallica to Sam, into the Sandman? No, no, not feeling no, it. No, I'm not feeling no. that, man. Oh, Blade, you've up, seen man. the Blade Races <laughs> last yeah. time, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, it's like, true, yeah. True. But you could like mix it in halfway through, do you know what I mean? But... Patera, yeah. never been stopped, no, never been put fight, down. A really good fight for him. I think he's definitely going to get rounds. I think one of the hardest things right now is, like I asked the question at a press conference, everyone's so hyped on Lewis Ritson, not just in Newcastle, but in Britain, even the zone, our US broadcasters, they can't wait to see him fight. It's just staying focused on the job rather than coming out thinking, I'm a knockout artist, yeah. you know? But when you watch Golovkin, and we've got the Geordie Golovkin here, everything's so balanced. It's not, he never loads up, does he? He never, no. he never thinks, I'm, I'm Golovkin, I have to put people to sleep. It's just natural, and he's a natural puncher as well. So I just feel like the test here is that Patera's not phased. Like yeah. You saw that in the press conference. I said, do you think you'll end his player? He sort of smirked as if to go, mate, I'm not the other guys he's been boxing. So I think this is a perfect fight for him. Mm. I mean, when I told him he was fighting for European title and Phil, they didn't even ask who against. They just went, oh, mate, I see at the press conference. And that's refreshing, but I want to see him get more rounds. That's why he's running out on the calm card. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, yeah. yeah and we want to Opponent-wise for that? Uh, I think we've got, we got someone booked in. It's, it's a little eight-round tick over that I'm hoping might go three or four rounds. Probably go one. <laughs> and we'll and go, you know, but but I, just, I just feel that he needs that kind of experience because what's he done in 12 months? 
six rounds or something like that. Seven rounds, eight rounds. And, and the last three fights have been, what, four rounds? Four rounds, yeah. So it's all very well saying, oh, he's ready for this, he's ready for this. How can he be if he's not actually having ring time? So that's something we need. But at the same time, fans are impatient. That's their job. They want to see him fill St. James's Park next summer. Mm. But who knows, if that right opportunity comes up for a world title next summer, because he'll be four or five fights deep by then, could be Campbell, could be Crawler. And then you might look at it and say, we'll take that risk. Mm. Now, if it's Mikey Garcia, you might say, or, or Linares, you might say, OK, well, we need another three or four. But, but eventually, but eventually, that's what you're up against. I was speaking to Joshua Boetzi earlier. Baturbia, Bivol, Alvarez, it's tough shit, mate. Once you get to the, the top end, there's no easy fights. There's no easy fights for him anymore, other than next Saturday. But but it's so exciting, so exciting to have someone that I just think, not just the city's behind, but you see, we see it on our social media numbers. You know, people want to watch Lewis Ritson fight because he's so exciting. And he's, he's a cheeky little fucker as well, because <laughs> I thought he was a real nice guy. Did you see he's done the rabbit ears behind me at the show? We can live on Sky as well. Yes. Unbelievable. Yes. What a liberty. No, I know. I caught you on that one. Yeah. He's one of his... Like, Seems to be one of his qualities is he, he doesn't seem to know exactly how good he is. I think he knows how good he is, but I think one of one of his better qualities is he knows he's got to keep his feet on the ground. Mm. And sometimes, as a fighter, you can start sort of walking around and thinking, "Fucking, how good is this?" Now I'm starting to earn some dough. I'm fighting for the European title. I've got a whole city behind me. But he's not really. He's just got his feet on his ground, and that's because he's got good people around him. You know, I'd like to say it was us, but we're not around him. People around him are Phil Jeffries, Neil Fannin, and his old man. They won't let him keep his feet off the ground. So when he's training where he's training, when there's no frills, when the team are saying to him, you, you do as you're told, you be here, you, and you're doing this, you're doing that, you can't get big time. And Lewis Ritson's not about to get big time, as in, you know, in the way he behaves. He's getting big time as a fighter, and that's exciting. But I'm so excited. I mean, last time was fucking unbelievable. Was unbelievable. I mean, I just remember, we didn't expect it. We knew he'd sold like 1,500 tickets on his own. But when we walked out, it was like it was like Frampton and Warrington back when they were sort of at European level, but with a music town up. It was that loud. And I think what it was, it was just the people of Newcastle embracing their own rough diamond. Not a kid who's come out of, you know, the, the Olympic setup and stuff like that. Like, you know, Josh Kelly was there, he has got a great fan base. He's gonna go on to be a great fighter. But it was like, no, this kid, we see him around on the streets. Mm. We know what he's been through to get to his position. You know what? He's fucking one of our own. <laughs> so we're going to raise the roof. We want to sell it out. This time he's going to do 3,000 tickets. Just before you go, yeah. Joseph Laws. <laughs> yeah, the man. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> do you so, know him? Yeah, I know him, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So Joseph Laws said that he's got that Gucci hat. Yeah. He said if he knocks his guy out in the second round, will you buy him a bag? A Gucci bag? What, yeah. one of those little strap ones? You well, know? I think so. I think. Yeah. Well, I reckon they reckon he done like four or 500 tickets for his debut. You know, I mean, it's just when you look at the Glen Foot, by the way, against Robbie Davis Jr. is a nice. brilliant fight. So we've got the Newcastle talent. We've also sprinkled in a little bit of excellence with Joshua Boetzi, who is Lewis knows the game. Oh, yeah, Boetzi is top, top, top level. You got Dave Allen, who's just you never know what you're going to get, but you're going to get a lot of fun. And then you got Lewis Ritson. So it's a big card. It's a bigger card than last time. It's a bigger test for Lewis Ritson. So six thousand last time. We want to do nine thousand. Thank he you wants to do it. He's on a little bit of a crowd bonus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, yeah, obviously opponent-wise for this, it was, you know, Edith Tatley yeah. uh, vacated and then it could have been Marvin Petit who's injured. But then Marvin Petit will be, if you're coming through October 13th, will be your next fight by the looks yeah. of it as well. Yeah, well, obviously we didn't realise we were penciling till for the back end of the year. But you just oh, really? In the press okay. conference, oh, you're fighting Petit if you win this or... Somebody says, oh, what are you doing after the fight? I says, I'll be straight back in the gym by the looks yeah. of it. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, we just keep me busy. And that's, what, that's what we asked them to do. That's what, that's what we wanted. We're never out the gym. So, keep the fights coming. Yeah, I mean, you're on the card, the Amir Khan and Vargas card. Is that just to kind of, because you've done four rounds in three fights over a space of time, just to kind of get you... To get the rounds. Yeah, yeah. basically. No, yeah, definitely. And, you if know, it goes that way, yeah. Yeah, it would go. Well, match room, we've, match room we've said we've got Napoleon that'll... Nah, I'm definitely good with the rounds. Never so works out like that. No, it never always works out like that, but hopefully, hopefully that does happen because you know we do need the rounds in case we don't get mm. material out early. Where we have done with the rest of them, you know, 
then we, we've been we've done a few rounds and mm. you know we're not thinking oh, what's happening here and going to go into panic mode which we'll not do anyway with fit lad we do doing 12 rounds in the gym all the time so I'm just looking forward it'll be good you said in the press conference that you're kind of looking at the fight with uh, Patera as kind of uh, like the long haul if you like you're, yeah. you're looking for it to possibly if it goes the distance because of his track record of obviously not being stopped and yeah. um, not even being put down so no. if you tick a couple of the boxes there you you know you no know, yeah he's a slippery character but um, you know, this is definitely European level. I think if we can stop the likes of Patero making a good statement, yeah. and then we're going box on and going box petite and we beat him, then I think we could even be done with European level then. Mm. You know, they're the two main ones in Europe at my level, and then we could hopefully go on to fringe world level after that. But it's one step at a time, one fight at a time. Lewis Richardson, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV, no and uh, we'll definitely catch up with you ahead of October yeah. 13th. The best of luck in camp. No, thank you very much, Krugan. Thank Top you. Man. Cheers.